The Old Testament reading for the presentation of the Augsburg Confession is from Nehemiah chapter 8. All the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate, and they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they heard, on the first day of the seventh month. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And as he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then, they said, then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, and to send portions, and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. That they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. The epistle is from 1 Timothy chapter 6. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand? testimonies before kings and shall not be put to shame. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges or confesses me before men, I will also acknowledge or confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Saturday, June 25th, 1530 at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, the Lutheran Church was officially born. The birthday of the Lutheran Church as it now had its own confession, the Augsburg Confession. The many faithful laymen that backed this confession of faith included the, men who, the man who penned this confession, Philip Melanchthon, as well as men named Gregory Brook and Christian Beyer, who were responsible for both presenting and then reading this faithful confession publicly before the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, he who was a devout Catholic. It took two whole hours to read the confession out loud. These laymen could have cowered. They could have cowered in fear over what might happen to them for boldly confessing the truth and refuting false teaching of the Catholic Church. They could have kept silent and never even come to Augsburg out of fear that a war would break out and they and many others would lose their lives. They could have shut up their mouths and never confessed out of fear that their goods, their livelihood, their possessions, including their own homes, would be confiscated, would be taken away, and they would be exiled from their home country. But they didn't fear. They didn't flinch. They fearlessly confessed, confessed their faith grounded in the Holy Scriptures alone. Today we as Lutherans, almost 500 years later, can be encouraged encouraged by the confession that we have that has stood the test of time we can fearlessly confess before men and not be afraid either of those who would oppose us and even desire to harm us for confessing christ alone for our salvation we fearlessly confess that this our confession the augsburg confession is to be confessed before men, and here we still stand doing it. The presentation of the Augsburg Confession, then, is a great example of fearing God rather than men. In our Gospel text for today, from Matthew chapter 10, Jesus' disciples were being sent out on their first public missionary preaching tour. And Jesus told them, they were to open their mouths publicly and boldly and fearlessly confess Jesus as Lord before the world. But Jesus says, prior to this text, that they would also be persecuted greatly for the sake of Jesus' name that they preached. They will be hated by all. They would even be hated by their very own family members, even their own children, for confessing this before others. But Jesus then says, the one who endures, the one who endures to the end, shall be saved. Our text begins at verse 26, and Jesus here is encouraging his disciples, saying, therefore, do not fear. The word there for fear is the English word phobia. Do not fear. Do not fear them. That is, those who would oppose you in your confession of faith in Jesus' word. But did you ever wonder what phobias these disciples, what fears they must have had being sent out? Some of these men probably had a, a great phobia of public speaking. They had a great phobia of going door to door from house to house and evangelizing people that they had never met or talked to before in their lives. After all, many of them were fishermen, weren't they? But despite their phobias and their fears and their many weaknesses, Jesus sent these fearful men to be fearless confessors of his word and to give great hope and assurance to those lost in their sins. What about your fears? What about your phobias? What are they? What are you fearful of? 
Maybe some of you have an almost debilitating phobia that makes it impossible for you to do some of the most common things that others are able to do without any fear at all. We need to be sensitive to that. Social phobias is one of the biggest categories of phobias today. And then there are phobias of being in crowded places around other people. Or then there are the ones that maybe we most commonly know, the specific phobias that people face, like snakes or bats or spiders or riding on planes even, or going in the water. Whatever phobias you face, they're hard to get over. They're hard to get past, aren't they? And some of these phobias you may never get past in your earthly life. So what three encouragements then, and even, you might say, antidotes for our phobias or fears does Jesus give today in our text? Well, verses 26 to 27, Jesus reveals encouragement number one. Why not to fear confessing Jesus before men? And according to the proverb Jesus uses, the cover of the container can only stay on that container so long. Can only stay so long on Jesus' teaching. And now it is time for the seal to be broken, what is concealed to be revealed, to have what's been hidden in Jesus' teaching, what's been whispered in the disciples' ears in private places, in the privacy of homes and other places without others around to hear. This message of hope, this message of salvation in Jesus alone will be only revealed now to the light, the precious gospel, it must be spread. It can't be kept quiet. Jesus says, my word, my gospel, my truth, my message of forgiveness, life, and salvation in, in myself alone, it must go out. So have no fear. Spread this good news. Verse 28, Jesus reveals encouragement number two of why not to fear confessing Jesus before men. He says, do not fear those, that is, those men, those humans, those other under the influence of the devil who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul. I think many people, including many Christians today, are still very fearful of this one today, aren't we? Sure, it's easy for a Christian to say, and even to say to their pastor, I'm not afraid to die. But if we're honest, we struggle. We struggle to believe in his word, in Jesus' word here, with this promise, don't we? Dying, let alone actually being killed for our faith, killed in our bodies, it's a big deal to us. We like our bodies, we like our lives, we like our livelihood in this world. We don't want to die. We're afraid of death, even. Even more afraid of being killed by someone else. The disciples were no different, especially Peter. Peter feared what might happen to him if he confessed Jesus after Jesus was arrested. Instead of fearlessly confessing, like, uh, like Peter, or confessing, he said, what? I don't know the man. I don't even know him. He, he denied Jesus three times, didn't he? How shameful. But how shameful it is for you too. For myself included. Who would not confess Jesus publicly and be ashamed of him. How shameful it is when we will not confess God's perfect, holy, inspired word and his will in his commandments before others because we're fearful of what might happen to us. Fearful of confessing what God's word has to say against Pride Month, what he has to say against same-sex unions, what God's word and will has to say against heterosexual couples living together, sleeping together before marriage. And pro-choice. And Roe v. Wade, thankfully it was overturned 
a year ago, we still deal with the ramifications of many babies still being murdered, especially in our own state. How shameful when we fail to confess Jesus publicly, when someone misuses the Lord's holy name or confesses false doctrine or teaching, and we say, ah, we just look past it. When someone fails to confess the truth of what God says in his holy word, and we're too afraid of the fight with family members or the tension that it might cause within our home, own homes to even bring it up or discuss it, how shameful that is for us. We don't defend our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't defend his word, even in hostile situations when Others make fun of Jesus when others make fun of his Bible, his word, his holy word, as if it's just fairy tales. Thankfully, the Lord was later gracious to restore Peter through confession and absolution. To boldly confess Jesus then before men, Peter was willing even to confess then, as he was filled with the Holy Spirit, to the point of dying, laying down his life for his Lord. May we repent of our failures also and do better in being fearless confessors the Lord has also forgiven us and as we confess will restore us. But next Jesus promises that the worst phobias or fear for almost every human being, the fear of death, can be put to rest by Jesus' encouragement. Because even if we were to be killed for our faith, Jesus assures us as Christian disciples that our soul never dies. The soul lives on. The soul lives on to await that body that is dead in the grave to be raised and to be reunited with the soul forever with the Lord, to always be together with the Lord. Rejoice in those words of encouragement from your Lord and Savior. No worries, no fears. Confess the Lord before others. But Jesus does tell us something that we should fear. That all people, all humankind should fear. The worst thing imaginable to happen to any person, any human being, is that they would be in hell. Jesus says, but rather fear him. Fear the Lord Jesus, our judge who is able to destroy, able to send both soul and body into hell. Fear Jesus, who says these most fearful words that we never want to hear, I will deny you who deny me on that last day, on that judgment day, declaring to God the Father, I never knew you. Depart from me, away from me, you workers of sin, darkness, and evil, you workers of unbelief, you go to hell with the devil. Verses 29 to 31, finally we get to Jesus revealing encouragement number three of why not to fear. Here he illustrates how much he loves you, each and every individual in the pew here today. If I could call you by name, I would do it. He encourages you that you are each more valuable than anything else to him. Jesus says, are not two sparrows sold for a cent, for a penny? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. So do not fear, you are more valuable than many sparrows. Your friends, even the smallest of the small birds the sparrow, appears to be uh, of no value. But God says it's valuable. Each of them is valuable to him. Each of them is an important part of his creation. And what little tiny bit of meat that is on them that could be sold for a few pennies was still beneficial to someone. Jesus gives a second illustration of our great value by saying, but the very hair's of your head are all numbered, each and every one numbered by God, important to him. Now there are estimated 140,000 hairs on a human's head. 
and I'm probably down to less than half of that now. And maybe some of you older gentlemen can actually count the number of hairs still left on your head. But why does that matter to God? Why would he care? Despite how many hairs have fallen from my head, washed off in the shower and onto the shower wall, which frustrates my wife to all get out, that I don't clean up after myself my hairs, or go down the drain, our hairs are still valuable to the Lord. He counts them. He knows all of them. And it's why we shouldn't fear, because he is so intimately and closely co connected to every single aspect of our lives. He cares. He cares for you. You are more important, more valuable than anything. You are valued by his great love for you. His love for you, poor, weak, frail sinners. And his only son, Jesus, who he the Father is well pleased with, for the redemption that he has won for each of us to confess that we are justified by his grace through faith that is our confession that is encouraging that is our bold confession that we can confess before the world so in all of these encouragements jesus uses all of them to encourage you not to fear to encourage his disciples not to fear to cast out your phobias, to cast them aside, and to give us that antidote to faithfully and fearlessly confessing Christ before others, no matter what the consequences may be. In closing, I'd like to leave you with the fearless words of one of the laymen at the presentation of the Augsburg Confession on June 25, 1530. Elector John the Constant, or Steadfast of Saxony, Germany, who said that he took up the pen with the other princes to sign their names on this confession two days before it was read and said, I desire to confess the Lord. My electoral hat and my fur coat are not as precious to me as the cross of Jesus Christ. I shall leave on earth these marks of my greatness, but my master's cross will accompany me to heaven. Praise be to God for his bold confession. And dear Christian, with the Lord and his encouraging word of how valuable each and every one of you are to him, you too carry your master's cross with you as the only means of salvation for you who are redeemed by him and his precious blood. Fear not. May these fearless laymen Confessors of the Augsburg Confession, may the once weak disciples who were then fearless to confess be your example as well as confessors of Christ give you courage to make the good confession always. Because in God, you trust. You shall not be afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.